So we're down here on the Tasman Peninsula at Saltwater River. Fortunately, the tide is out far enough that we can get by without getting too wet. There's a reason we're down here. It's because I think that I might have made a small discovery. And what that is, is out there just beneath the surface. So this piece of wood that the dog is pretty interested in has been cut, it's been cut with a saw and there's quite a few bits of wood washed up along the sand here, just like it. Now, that means that there's something man-made that's been here. Oh, it could be a boat, it could be a house. No, I think it was actually a railway, a very primitive railway, and the remnants of it are just out there. Now, I can't walk out there, obviously, and I'm not gonna go swimming, but if we get a look from above, and maybe look at some old photos too, we can get a better picture of what used to be here. This photo is from 1958. It depicts a female sitting on the hill, enjoying the view over Saltwater River. Down in the water, there is an unnatural straight line. In this photo, likely taken on the same day, a group of people are looking at the rotting wood as it runs out across the shallows. Using satellite images, it is possible to locate from where the photos were taken. Zooming in, we can see a straight line of compressed earth running from the water's edge up into the field. That same line is visible in real life, even if what left that scar has been gone at least a century. This particular line was primitive, powered by men, pushing carriages on timber lines. Others like it were used for moving felled gum. This one, however, was probably used to move sandstone from the quarry nearby. The full extent of the human-powered tramway that crossed the Tasman Peninsula in the early Van Diemen's Land period is a mystery. Even the most well-known stretch is poorly documented. In 1836, Captain John Booth forced convicts to construct an eight kilometre track on rough cut timber, beginning at Long Bay. Roughly following where the road is today, the track was a logistical tactic that allowed ships to unload cargo and passengers at the sheltered Long Bay, rather than sailing all the way around the coast and potentially being caught by bad winds or large swells. Once in Norfolk Bay, they could go on to Hobart Town in relative tranquility. This small, undated drawing by Bernard John Lawson shows a carriage in motion. It's almost childlike. This is the most well-known image of the line. Again, it looks like a cartoon, a colourised painting by William L. Watson based on a sketch by Godfred Mundy. As this painting shows, the track even had sightings perhaps a more realistic image of how it all looked. In Tirana, there is a chocolate shop and behind it is an open air museum. Within it is a collection of antique machinery and a promising sign. Despite their appearance, the artifacts within it don't have that much to do with the main tramway. For the Tomb of His Natural Life by Marcus Clarke was published in 1874, taught in schools and adapted multiple times. The best known version is from 1927, a silent film. Within it contains a reenactment of the tram line, convicts pushing free folk between their destinations. Tasman's Inn, formerly Norfolk Bay Convict Station, is where the line terminated. Out the front of the building is something that you can touch. So the dog and I, we're sitting inside this 
carriage now. I believe this is a replica. If it wasn't a replica, well, it's not been taken very good care of. It's more of a tourist attraction to give you a bit of an idea of what the convict railway was actually like back in the day. Now the dog doesn't know what's going on and I sort of don't either, but originally with these things you can imagine he'd be sitting inside and there'd be four dudes on the outside, a convict at each corner, and they'd be pushing you along the railway. Now the tracks were made of wood, the wheels were made of steel, but the rest of it was made of a mixture, supposedly, but we don't really know because like a lot of things to do with colonial Van Diemen's Land and Port Arthur records weren't really kept. It was uh, a pretty aggressive sort of society where things weren't recorded. But anyhow, the dog and I are sort of rocking back and forth on this for our own amusement. What do you think, pups? Wanna go down? All right, mate. Come on. When Port Arthur was closed in 1877, the tramway collapsed under the weight of neglect. Despite the fascination, the depiction is fractured. In this undated photo, we see the tramway with what appears to be iron rails running out along the jetty. This is contrary to the more popular understanding that the rail line was all made of wood. Much of the early period of Van Diemen's Land is a permanent mystery. But that fact is why it's so interesting. Looking back into the past, you can never really tell if what you're seeing was even there to begin with.